uh, reading reform and they're getting dramatic results. So I just met a couple weeks ago with one of the primary reformers um, in, in his administration. He, she was in charge of leading the reform. Uh, she came out to Minnesota to talk with us. And so we have sort of next steps that we're going to do here. Now, they, they were able to make reform throughout schools. So now we've only touched the new teachers. Uh, we want to touch all teachers, and she's sharing ideas. So on the 17th, I'll be talking about the Florida reform movement and what we need to do uh, to further reform here. And we have a pretty good, pretty big grassroots reading reform effort here in Minnesota that started right here in the Twin Cities. And we meet periodically, and if anybody's interested in uh, joining that, we'd love to have more involved. So, John, when you said the new teacher is starting in March 2012 to get licensed to you know, the new reform stuff, does that include the five-strand teaching yeah. approach, or is it even more than that? It's more than that. It's five strands is, is really um, the center of it. But we're looking at a, you know, how to interpret assessments, how to give assessments, how to interpret them. Um, it goes well beyond just the five strands, but I think the five strands are weighted more heavily in the assessment than other, and they should be uh, in the assessment than other areas. Okay. So all universities in Minnesota. Yeah. Have yeah, and then what they've had to do, we we passed this in two in June of 2009. The Board of Teaching passed our recommendations. Uh, unanimously and then starting I think it passed June 9th uh, it was on a Thursday and I bet by June 10th um, colleges were sitting down and they had to totally overhaul yeah. they had to overhaul their entire curriculums and then they it had to be approved by the Board of Education so I had to go back to uh, to the Department of Education and those those new curriculum had to be laid out and then they had the standards and they actually had to go through and make sure the curriculum aligned to the standards. And there are schools they're doing they've started about a year ago giving the practice assessments for this in March and uh, the scores are not good. And so there a lot of universities there's, there's panic in the colleges of education <coughs> because it's going to be very reflective uh, there'll, there'll be a, a public report card that comes out of what the passing rates are in these colleges. Yep. That's, that's, exa that's exactly right. If we were to give, when teachers come here for te teacher training, we give them a pre-assessment and a post-assessment of this reading knowledge. And I would dare say that many, many teachers or professors in higher education wouldn't do well on it. So. Even if they're reading teachers? Maybe, oh. maybe especially if, yeah. because they're reading, yeah, even if they're reading teachers. I have a question backing up a little bit. You were talking um, about the emerging readers and really controlling their texts because we don't want them guessing. Um, I deal with like an eighth grader who can hardly read cat. You know, what what do you suggest? I mean, there's text, any text that's in it of any interest? Like yeah. That's a, that's a great question. So here you have, you know, you have a child who's reading at a first, he's in eighth grade, he's reading at a first grade level. We have kids here like that. And they're, but they're in an eighth grade brain, right? So you have to be able to explain to them on the one level that we have to control this, that you haven't been given good reading instruction. We have to go back to the beginning. We'll move through it quickly, uh, as quickly as you're ready to move through it, and just stay with it, because there is light at the end of the tunnel. But on the other end, you have to challenge the kid at his level of interest, and that's where you get books on tape, and you know, you, you push that, get the Harry Potter in, on tape and have them listen to that and say, you know, if you work hard here, you'll be here and you'll be able to read this you know, on your own. But we have to work through it. And that's where you gotta get kids to step back and say, this is word science here. And we, we, you, you've got to buy into it. It, t it takes some level of persuasion, but on the other hand, if after just a couple of weeks, the kids r reading, you know, the fat cat and the rat sat on the mat, 
fluently, that motiv that's mo I, I believe that's motivating in and of itself. If a kid can read a paragraph of that controlled text, even if it's first or second grade level, we can have them in, you know, in a half a year's to a year's time at the fourth or fifth grade level. It can move that quickly for kids who are motivated. But that, somebody brought up motivation early, and that is a kid who's not motivated is turned off. It's a much more difficult task. That's why we have to catch the kids by the end of third grade. There's a lot more going on after that. Anything else? Well, again, thanks for coming out. And uh, please don't hesitate to call or email if you have any questions.